Hey, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn and previously I made a video about Lagrange interpolation and uh, while I was making that video I, I realized that there are many other kinds of interpolation that are very useful and uh, interpolation, if you don't know, is the uh, creation of intermediate data points. So if you have a data point here, you have a data point here, interpolation is what do you do if you want anything in between, in between these two points. Uh, this is a very common thing in science, technology, and engineering. And um, yeah, if you're if you're at all interested in in these topics, then then interpolation should definitely be something that you know how to do. And um, and yeah, so if you want to learn more about this, then definitely stick around. All right, so here I'm on Desmos.com. I can click on graphing calculator. And here we can start building our stuff. So first, let's put in some points. So I'm gonna say point one is that, point two equals, and it really doesn't matter what you put for now, uh, because we're gonna move them anyways. Uh, three comma zero, and E four equals four comma one, let's say. So now I have a, <clears throat> a bunch of points. I'm gonna move them around anyways to have it a bit more balanced here. Okay, so now what we want is we want to have uh, our first interpolation. And for, what, uh, for that, I'm going to do a, what's called a piecewise linear interpolation. And that's just, uh, that just means, piecewise just means we're gonna have a different piece for each segment, a different type of function for each segment. And, and the interpolation is linear, meaning it's a straight line. All right, so how do we do that? Um, well, let's just first make one straight line. So we could have, uh, we could just type x here. x is a straight line, right? So this, this basically is just f of x equals x, right? Um, so that's my straight line. And now I want to have that line between, let's say, this point and this point. So how can I do that? Uh, well, let's, let's first move this line so that it crosses zero right underneath this red point here. And how do you move a line like that? Well, you just have to remap this x value. So what I could do, for instance, is subtract from it, right? If I subtract from it, then, then basically the line crosses the, um, the x-axis farther to the right. Um, and, and so I can, I can move this one way, I can move this the other way like that, right? And so what I wanna do is I wanna subtract uh, the x coordinate of the first point from that. So I can say minus p1 dot x. And now I have it always crossing the, the x axis right underneath that point. Um, so that is the first thing that I wanna do. Um, now, the second thing that I could do is, because I, I wanted to move through this point, how do I do that? Well, like it shouldn't go through zero right underneath this point, it should go through the point itself. And for that, I can just add the y coordinate, right? So p1 dot y plus p1 dot y. And now I have a line that always goes through that point. Uh, now the next thing is I want to make sure that this line also goes through that point. And how can I do that? Um, well, uh, the first thing to realize is that uh, to change the, the angle of this line, I would have to change, uh, like make, put a, uh, multiply this by some factor. Right, so let, let me just put some brackets around here and now I can get the line twice as steep, for instance, by just typing two or three or four. Or if I want it the other way, I can say times minus something, right? Okay, uh, and so now I need to have the slope of the line so that it, so that it goes exactly through the second line. And so how do I do that? Well, I have to multiply it. So I have to multiply this by a slope. And so how do I get the slope? Well, the slope, if you, if you remember from high school, uh, the slope of a line is the rise over the run of that line. And so, um, so basically how far, how far forward do I go? Like if, like if I go a certain amount forward, how far up or down do I go? And the way to calculate that is I can, I can just, um, first calculate the height difference between these two points. So the height difference between these two points would be p2.y minus p1.y. 
and now I th that's the rise uh, and now I can just divide that by the run and so let me see if I can um, I'm not sure if that's gonna put that correctly but anyways let's just try it uh, and let's just divide this by the run and the run would be two to p2 dot x minus p1 dot x okay and so now I have a line that goes exactly through that other point which is pretty cool all right so now we just have to make sure that we only showed a piece of that line and in Desmos what you can do here you can put curly brackets and now you can say uh, you can make an expression here that has to evaluate to true for the line to show up so I can say uh, that p1 dot x is smaller than x and so only when p1 dot x is smaller than x uh, this line shows so now this shows you half it shows you array basically but then I can just say well an x should be smaller than p2 dot x and so now I have a line segment all right so for good measure let's try to do this two more times so okay so for the second one I'm going to do x minus p2 dot x which is the line that is shifted so that it's zero always underneath this point and then I'm going to add p2 dot y to that and then I'm going to change the slope of it and to change the slope I have to just put brackets around here um, and then multiply it by the rise over the run right so um, uh, the rise is in this case it's uh, p3 dot y minus p2 dot y that's the rise that's how far up or down it goes and the run equals um, p3 dot x minus p2 dot x okay so now I have that line segment here here it looks a bit different this is what I was kind of uh, thinking about before sometimes Desmos puts it in front and sometimes it puts it on top here it's basic, it comes down to the same thing although perhaps this is a nicer way of writing it because here you can really see the slope as a separate term uh, and then we have to do the same thing uh, to just get piecewise so p2 dot x smaller than x smaller than p3 dot x so that's our second line segment uh, and then for good measure just to make sure that we really understood this let's do this one more time so we have uh, x we're going to shift it over to be at zero underneath the third position let's put some brackets around that already uh, and then multiply it by the rise over the run so the uh, the rise is um, p4 dot x no p4 dot y minus p3 dot y the run equals p4 dot x minus p3 dot x and now we just have to shift this entire thing up and how far do we have to shift it up well we have to shift it up by this much right from here to here let me just move that over there from here to here so that is p3 dot y right so plus p3 3 dot y y all right and then we have to cut that out again so p3 dot x smaller than x smaller than p4 dot x and let's make that a nice black color all right, there you have it that would be piecewise linear pretty cool I mean this is cool in the sense that it like goes through all of the points and it and it follows the shape pretty well um, of course one uh, disadvantage of this is that this is not smooth right um, so there are there are hard kinks here uh, at the at the end points which is perhaps not what you want um, so let's try to make a different one but first let me just take a sip of tea all right let's try to make a different one uh, so for this one I want to instead of a straight line segment between each of these I want to use a cosine so let's just have a look at a cosine so that's what a cosine looks like and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this segment from it right here let me just cut it out so I'm going to use the interval from 0 to x to pi um, because it's nice and smooth at the top and at the bottom so uh, so instead of a straight line segment we're going to stick a, a piece of cosine in between each of these 
So let's see how we can do that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure because this is a trigger, trigonometric function that, um, that works on, um, on multiples of pi. And that's not so easy to work with generally unless you're using all kinds of other trig functions. Um, so I'm going to normalize this, uh, meaning I'm going to get it into a range that is easier to work with. Um, and the range I'm going to uh, put this in is instead of fr going from, from 0, over here, over here, instead of going from 0 to pi, right, it's pi over there, I'm going to have it go from 0 to 1. And how I do that is just multiply this by pi. Multiply this by pi. Uh, and now I can just get the interval of 0 to 1, uh, which is already a lot easier to work with. Similarly, for the, for the height of this curve, this curve goes from minus 1 over here to 1 over there, uh, meaning that it has a total range of 2. Uh, I don't want that. I want it to have a range of 1. So while well, that's simple enough, you can just multiply this by 0 0.5, right? Multiply it by half. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, let's just see uh, how we can do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, this curve uh, so that the start position is at the, at the x of this point. And similar to how I did it before, we, uh, the, the, the way we do that is by remapping this x value over here. So let me just put some brackets around this and subtract p1.x from it. Uh, what am I doing wrong here? Um, am I doing this wrong? Am I supposed to do this here? Minus p1 dot x. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, obviously, uh, if I do that, then I need to update this range as well. So let me just take this range out so that we that we uh, can see what we're doing here. Um, so I'm going to remap this x value over here, so minus p1.x. And so now that I just made it at the top, or that the start of this curve is at, at where this point is. Um, so that is that. And now I just have to, let me see here. Um, so right now my range from the highest to the lowest is 1, right? Because it goes from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5. Uh, let's try to make it that the range is the same range as the height difference between these two points. Um, so because my range is already in like 1 right now, I can just multiply it by the height difference between those two points. So the height difference between those two points normally would be calculated as p2.y minus p1.y. Um, but now, if you notice here, like this curve here goes down, okay? But we want it to go up because this, the blue point is higher than the red point. And so we have to uh, negate this, okay? So you could do that like that, or you could do that by turning these two points around. So I can say P1 and P2. Uh, so this is opposite of what we did before, let's say over here. Uh, and the only reason why is because the cosine, when you have a normal cosine here, let me just cosine of x, uh, the cosine uh, right, out, right out of the gate, it goes down, it doesn't go up. And so for that reason, we have to negate that. Uh, all right, so now we have something that goes up and down the same, the same amount as, as the difference between these two points. And now we just have to shift this, this curve up so that it fits with those points, right? Um, so, well, first, let's just make it that we move the curve up so that this point is resting on the x-axis. And so how far do we have to move that up? Let me just make some more space here. Uh, we have to move that up by half of the width here, right? And the, and the width, that was this, and half of the width is this. So we can just do this and um, subtract it, not add it. There we go. All right, so now we have the, that same curve rested on here. And now uh, we have to move this point up so that it hits that point. Uh, well, for that, we can just um, add uh, p1.y. 
Okay, and now the last thing is we need to stretch it so that we need to stretch this entire curve so that it fits with that other point there. And, um, and we already made it that the, that the period from here to here is, is exactly one. So we can just multiply that by the difference between these two points from here to here. Um, and to do that, I just have to, let me see here, is that over here? No, that's outside of this. So we have to just multiply this by the difference between those, between one and two. So p2 dot x minus p1 dot x. Um, uh, not multiply it, uh, divide it. So take that and stick that over there. Okay, so now we have a sine wave that is, or a cosine that is stuck to exactly the, those two points. Um, and now let's, let's just uh, make sure that we're not seeing anything outside of this range. So we just go, because uh, we only want to show it between p1.x and p2.x, right? So p1.x smaller than x smaller than p2.x. Okay, so now it only shows that. And let me just turn these ones off. Uh, that one as well. So now we have a piece of a sign. Uh, now this can be made a little bit shorter because there's a common term here because this term and this term are the same. Uh, so we can factor that term out. So what we can do instead is we can get rid of this here and we could just say uh, that cosine minus one and then brackets around that multiplied by this entire thing, right? Because if you multiply this out, you get the cosine times this, which is the first term, and then you get minus one times that, which would, which would be the second term. All right, so now we have a piece of a cosine function in between there. So let's just uh, try to do this two more times. So cosine uh, x minus p2 dot x to shift it over so that uh, p2 p2 dot x to shift it over so that the top of this is always uh, where where the blue point is um, and then I'm going to multiply that entire thing times pi so that so that my range doesn't go uh, in terms of pi but it goes in terms of 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 uh, well basically the the period is is one so I'm just going to go times pi. Um, so now the difference between the top and the bottom is is only one in the x direction. Um, and then I'm going to shift that entire thing down by one. And then uh, I'm going to make it that the height difference between here and here is the same height difference as between here and here. So that is. Uh, first, I multiply it by 0 0.5 because right, right now, uh, right now it goes from 0 to minus 2. So I first to go from 0 to minus 1 is times 0 0.5, um, and then uh, I have to multiply it by the the difference in height between these two points. So that is um, p2. Uh, dot y minus uh, minus p3 dot y uh, and now I just have to shift this entire thing up so that it hits that point or maybe we could do the stretching first actually let's just do the stretching first so that that this point this point is stretched to where the green point is and so for that we divide this thing this thing over here, this thing, we divide that by the difference in x's between the two. So that is uh, p3 dot x minus p2 dot x. Okay, so now that curve is stretched. So the one point is here, the other point is right underneath where the green point is. And now the last thing is we just have to shift this entire curve up by, by this amount here. So uh, and for that, we just add p2 dot y. Okay, and now we have a, a cosine that is stuck exactly to these two points. 
and now we just make it piecewise by saying p2.x smaller than x smaller than p3.x and there's our second point perfect so let's make this black let's make that also black okay and now for good measure we're going to do this whole thing one more time so start with the cosine of x uh, we we move it over to the third point so that the the top of the cosine is underneath the or it's exactly where the, the the green point is and we take that and uh, we multiply it by pi so that the length between the top and the bottom is exactly fr from there to there it's exactly one and it's not and it's not pi um, and then we um, subtract one from it so that it's stuck at the bottom here um, and then we have to because now it goes from minus two to zero uh, first let's let's multiply this entire thing here let me put some brackets around this so let's first multiply this by 0 0.5 so that the the range is only one right it goes from minus one to zero um, and then let's uh, let's make it that um, uh, that we stretch it so that so that the yeah like one point is here right now but the bottom point should be stuck to that part so we do that by dividing this part here by the by the difference in x's right so that is uh, p4 dot x minus p3 dot x okay so now we have it that that the minimum is always stuck under the or under the purple point and the maximum always under the green point um, and now um, let's make it that the height difference between the top and the bottom is the same as the height difference between these two points uh, so that for that i'm just going to multiply it by uh, p3 dot y minus p4 dot y so now that height difference is the same um, and now the last thing is I just need to shift this curve up so it, it touches the green point here. And for that, I just add P3 dot Y. And now we have a cosine that sticks exactly to those points. And now let's just make it a segment to say P3 dot X smaller than X smaller than P4 dot X. And let's make it black. There we go. And there you have it. A nice piecewise cosine interpolation and uh, this cosine interpolation is is smooth unlike um, unlike the linear one that we did before um, and this works really well if all of your points are are at an inflection point where or at a maximum or a minimum of the curve like this like in this case this looks beautiful right this is a really nice interpolation um, Interpolation is maybe not as good as, as the Lagrange interpolation that we had um, in a previous video. Um, when you have something like this, when when the when the points are um, all kind of in the same direction and none of these points lie on a maximum or a minimum, because then what you get is you get um, these unnecessary flat parts in the curve. So so yeah so. For different purposes, you want to perhaps look at different types of interpolation. So that's why I thought it could be good to show you, you know, apart from Lagrange, what else can we do? You know, there's still more more types of interpolation, and there is a famous one called Bezier interpolation that I'll probably do a video about in the future. Uh, but for now, I'll leave it here. So I, I hope you liked this. If you did. Please do me a favor, click that like button and subscribe button. You can always unsubscribe later if you, if you found out that maybe you didn't like my videos as much as you think you do. Um, but, but yeah, please, please do that. Like it's gonna help, help a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, either way, I will hopefully see you next time.